My name is Barbara Ernst Prey, and I'm an American artist. This is my first major international exhibit, and I'm very excited about it. I've been painting watercolor for well over 30 years. Uh, Winslow Homer, an American painter, was, has been a great influence. His his love of color is something that I've taken with me. Um, color is very important to me. And as a watercolorist, you don't want to just kind of do the same thing because that's boring. You always want to push yourself and push the medium. So I started small. You can see the small paintings and the small sketches. And then I've gone to larger paintings and larger sheets. And um, my colors are very saturated because I try and push the color as far as it will go. Um, and yet it's still, the painting still holds together. I was very lucky to have had the experience of going to Williams College and then I did my graduate work at Harvard and my professor Lane Faison at Williams really taught me uh, to look and to see and um, opened up my world really to all the great painters of the past and so I owe a lot to him in helping me really take the academic aspect and put that into my personal painting. You can look at something, but as a painter, you really have to see it. And sometimes, like, like after the rain and reunion, which are in the exhibit, I drove by about probably 10,000 times, and I looked, and I looked, and I looked, but I had to wait till I really saw what was there. I was lucky to have a mother who was an incredible artist. Uh, she was head of the design department at Pratt Art Institute in New York and we grew up with a big studio in our house and I would go out painting with her when I was young. Um, so I have this tradition of painting and it was just something that's in your genes and that you're really called to do. So I think just her being and who she was was a major influence. In 1986, we lived in Taiwan for a year. I had a grant from the Henry Luce Foundation, and I was able to study with a Chinese master painter who taught me a lot about Chinese painting, and I still work with Chinese brushes. So that was a wonderful thing to be able to incorporate into my work and also to study Chinese painting. Most of my paintings are really about the personal connection, or there's a connection either to the the, the spot, um, it's where I live, it's something, there's an emotional, obviously as an artist there has to be some sort of a very serious visceral, emotional reaction to spend your time doing something and I know a lot of the people or the stories behind the, the building or for example the buoys. For someone you might not know that that's right next to me in Maine and I've been watching the lobstermen fish for maybe 15, 20, 30 years. So these are people who are my neighbors, they're my friends. Um, to me, the, the workshops where they paint the buoys in the winter uh, or where they're working in the summer are such a statement of who they are. So although I may not put figures in my painting, they're really portraits of people in a, in a different way. Every once in a while I do do a, a person um, such as the mender that's in this exhibit and you, they're, they're mending the nets right before they go out to fish and that you know, I saw him, he was there, and I did the painting, so that was very exciting to be part of that process. I don't put people in my paintings because I feel that it stops the painting, um, and I really want the viewer to look at the painting and put themselves in the painting and imagine that they're, they're in it. We've included some early work in the exhibit, and I think that helps inform my later work. I wanted to include some of the magazine illustrations that I did for The New Yorker, for Gourmet, for The New York Times, and also my sketches from the sketchbook, because I think that helps you see the process of an artist. And when, you, when I was doing those little line drawings, you're looking at the outside and the details, and then when you do the shapes, the line, and then when you do watercolors, you're really working from the inside out instead of from the outside in. And you can see that in a number of the paintings that are on exhibit here. The quilts were a wonderful series that I had done uh, maybe 10 years ago and we were in, we lived in a very rural area and there were some quilters in our church and they made us a quilt and I'd always wanted to do a painting of the quilt which is so beautiful and I'm excited because it's in the exhibit so you can see the quilt and see the painting. When I was up in Maine I saw these quilts on sticks blowing in the wind. Um, someone had them in their backyard and that was the inspiration for the quilt painting and the quilt series. NASA has commissioned me to do four pieces of artwork for them and this is also exciting for me because I haven't seen my Columbia tribute painting 
which is now on exhibit uh, because it's usually on exhibit at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. And one of the paintings that I had done for them of the X-43, which is the fastest aircraft in the world, will be going on a national, and I say national American tour, with 50 other paintings for the 50th anniversary of NASA. Uh, and the other artists are Robert Rauschenberg and Andy Warhol, so I'm just very pleased to be included in that exhibit. What I'd love for people to, when they go through this exhibit, is to really look at the artwork, look closely, move far away, look up close, and um, you know, technically look at the washes, which work well. But there are so many aspects that go into watercolor painting that you don't think about. And it's actually not that well known because it was always this, the kind of the second cousin to oil painting. And it's just a wonderful medium. and. Hopefully when they leave, they'll just have a greater sense of um, versatility. A lot of the themes that I choose are very universal. They just happen to be through my lens where I live. I was pleased that the Mona Bismarck Foundation chose as the title for this exhibit, An American View, because it just has so many different meanings and layers. Uh, it's my view as an American, what I paint. It's also um, I loved how they chose family portrait as the uh, image because it's the view from the chairs. You can look at it that way. Um, and it's also, as an artist, just my personal view fr uh, from what I see as a painting. And there are so many different artists that have different views, so this is my personal and American view. Barbara's style as a watercolor painter is, is distinctly her own and very different from um, contemporary American artists who, who are working in different media. I love the rich palette and the saturated color and uh, that it's very much of an individual statement and yet, yet it's evocative of certain traditions in American painting and watercolor painting. Barbara Price's place in the history of American painting is an interesting one. She is a very accomplished, of course, realist watercolorist working in the United States today. And although it is distinctly modern and contemporary, her work also has interesting and beautiful resonances with American painting of the earlier, earlier 20th century, and also even reaching back to the middle of the 19th century. She, like most artists, has developed her own very distinctive style while looking at the works of older artists. This is a beautiful historic space and so elegant and uh, it makes for an interesting compliment to Barbara's work. Beautiful architecture, uh, but I think her work stands out beautifully in the space.